And now that I've explained why patients with congenital heart disease are blue, let me go on to talk to you about the major congenital heart diseases. And if you recall, and I told you earlier on, that the major congenital heart diseases are divided into two big groups. In one big group, our patient is cyanosed and blue. We have a blue baby. And in the other, our patient is not cyanosed and is not blue. So let me first deal with the ones where there is no cyanosis, where our baby is not blue. So these babies must have an uncomplicated auricular septal defect or an uncomplicated ventricular septal defect, an uncomplicated ASD and an uncomplicated VSD. And that immediately reassures us. When we look at the list, the first one you see on that list, acyanotic congenital heart disease is a ventricular septal defect, a VSD. A ventricular septal defect is quite a common acyanotic congenital heart disease. And why is it of importance? Well, it's important for two reasons. Firstly, because these patients with a ventricular septal defect previously pose the risk for infective endocarditis and ought to have been put on prophylactic antibiotics. However, in light of the extensive research and the good work carried out by the NHS and the NICE report in 2014, the NICE guidelines, patients with a ventricular septal defect no longer pose a risk for infective endocarditis and do not need to be put on prophylactic antibiotics. If you have a VSD, a ventricular septal defect, the oxygenated blood is going to go from the left to the right and that puts an enormous load on the right side of the heart because it's got its normal blood flow to deal with plus that of the shunt's blood flow. And the amount of blood going through the pulmonary circulation may be several times more than the amount going through the aorta. The other thing that happens sometimes in a patient with a VSD, with a ventricular septal defect, is that the patient can reverse their shunt. I told you previously that if you have congenital pulmonary stenosis, that will increase the pressure on the right side and the patient can reverse their shunt. But these patients, patients with a ventricular septal defect, because of the large pulmonary flow, may develop an obliterative arthritis of all the small vessels of the shunt and that increases the pressure on the right side and the patient can then reverse their shunt and then the patient who was previously not cyanosed and not blue can become so. This you will hear from time to time and is referred to as the Eisenmenger complex. How do you make a diagnosis of a ventricular septal defect? Well that's easy. If there is a hole and a shunt and that is being pumped by the left ventricle, it's going to make a noise as it goes through the hole in the heart and there will be a murmur. And if there isn't a murmur, you can pick up this defect by the Doppler ultrasound or if you like, you can put a catheter in the heart and show that the chambers on the right side of the heart, which should have desaturated demoglobin, deoxygenated blood, have a higher oxygen content because of the flow from the left side. So that is his importance to you. Normally patients with a ventricular septal defect are not cyanosed and are not blue unless and until they develop this Eisenmenger complex. Blood flow through the lungs may be tremendous. And you can pick that up with a chest x-ray showing very large pulmonary arteries. And if there is a murmur, you can pick that up by the Doppler ultrasound. This is easily repaired surgically, so you close off the VSD. If you are a dentist and they came to you for dental treatment, if you are a doctor and they came to you for surgical procedure and nurse, previously patients with a ventricular septal defect ought to have been put on prophylactic antibiotics. However, in light of the NICE guidelines, in 2014, patients with a ventricular septal defect do no longer pose a risk 
for infective endocarditis and do not need to be put on prophylactic antibiotics. Previously, it was thought that there was a risk, not necessarily because there was a valvular lesion, but where that ventricular jet of blood impinged on the opposite side of the heart, on the lining of the heart, on the endocardium. That's where it was thought that injury could occur and infection or infective endocarditis could start, but not on the valve. 